Hey, what is up guys? It is Orbin Hardware with a brand new video. Today, we're gonna build a super cheap 1080 and 1440p gaming monster with a budget of just $700. Now this PC features parts that should be fairly easy to find at stock MSRP. In this video, I'm gonna run you guys through the entire build process, step by step how you can put this build together too, before booting the system up and testing out the gaming performance in some of the current most popular games. We're gonna benchmark all games in 1080 medium to high settings, but we're also gonna look at 1440p at medium settings as well, and this is to give you guys an idea what to expect in case you decide to build this PC. Now in case you're wondering about what parts I'm using, you can easily find all components linked up in the video description below. Now before we get into the video, hey my name is Robin and on this channel we benchmark and build gaming PCs using both the latest and used PC parts to help you decide what PC parts to pick for your next gaming PC. And so if that is something you're interested in, smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button and notification bell and let me know what price target we should try and hit for upcoming videos. With that said, let's go ahead and start with the base of today's build, the CPU, RAM and motherboard and for today's build I ended up picking the DS3H B450 board from Gigabyte coming in at around $70. Now this is an MTX motherboard so it is a little bit smaller than a typical standard motherboard that however doesn't have any impact on the frame rate. In fact this motherboard offers everything you could possibly ask for without breaking the bank. The savings we make here guys will allow us to spend a bit more on graphics. This has a big impact on the FPS count. Now we're gonna pair the B450 board with this. This is the Ryzen 5 3600 coming in at around $199. This is a 6 core CPU with SMT with a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost clock that goes all the way to 4.2. Let's take a quick look at the gaming performance, the CPU gaming performance and here we can see that this $200 processor doesn't disappoint, making the 6 core 3600 a great pick for today's budget PC build. Now, as we can see, our motherboard comes with a retention frame pre-installed, but since we are gonna use a cooler with springs, we're gonna have to get rid of these two plastic frames. Now, the CPU installment is easy. First, open up the metal arm. A golden triangle is located on the lower left side of the processor. And this triangle should be pointing to a corresponding triangle that we find on the motherboard uh, socket. Turn the CPU so these two triangles match up. Then simply drop the processor into the socket and gently move the metal arm all the way down until it locks in place and voila, our CPU is installed. For our CPU cooler we're gonna use the included stock cooler and installing this is as simple as it looks. Make sure each spring screw makes a connection with the back plate, then follow a diagonal pattern like this, turning each spring screw until you feel resistance. Also make sure to connect the CPU fan cable to the CPU fan header to the motherboard. For our system memory, we're gonna go with this red, highly popular Corsair Vengeance kit coming in at around $90. Installing this is super easy. For optimal performance, we're gonna populate the gray slot. So simply pull back the toggle for the second and fourth dim slot and plug them in just like so. Let's go ahead and install our budget M.2 storage device from Kingston. This one with half a terabyte worth of space. This is enough to fit quite a few games, obviously you can also add a bunch of SSD devices as this motherboard has support for 6 in total. Now we find one of the M.2 slots right here below the CPU socket. Now gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with a 45 degree angle with this notch you see here lining up with the corresponding notch on the motherboard. Then take the little screw you got here, hold it down just like so 
and screw it down until it stops. Now we can go ahead and move our whole base of our build if you like and install it in our case. And in this build I ended up picking the Fantex P300A coming in at $60. Now this is a top of the line, highly quality mid tower enclosure with a massive cooling potential. One of my top favorite budget cases of the year for sure. Now in order to get access to the interior we need to undo these two thumb screws to remove the tamper glass side panel. Now before we can install a motherboard however, we first need to go ahead and install the IO shield. This is located inside the motherboard box and it goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now we can take our whole assembly and slide it into place and we're gonna use the screws that comes provided by Fantex. And with the board installed before we move on to power supply and graphics, now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB. So let's go ahead and start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, yeah guys, we have the front panel connectors and these are located on the right side. These small cables can be a bit tricky guys, but don't sweat it, just take your time. For today's build, because this is a budget oriented PC build, I chose the EVGA 600W unit with 80 plus efficiency certification. Now 600W is a bit overkill for this PC build and you can easily settle for the 500W variant. Make sure that the fan is facing downwards, then gently slide the PCU into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. And first up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to a connector that we find on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Alright so last but definitely not least guys. We find a GTX 1660, this particular card coming from Asus and this is their dual variant. Now based on the touring architecture, the 1660 offers a great 1440p gaming experience at medium to high graphics, but as you can imagine, gaming at 1080p with high level of graphics is where this card is meant for. We obviously gonna look at what kind of frame rate you can expect a bit later after we completed the build. The price performance ratio is excellent for the 1660, however prices are currently upside down right now as most of you guys already know. Hopefully though there is a chance that this gets better as we're getting closer to summer. Plug in the graphics card and take this PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics just like so. And what is left to do is just to flip the case around, whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $700 gaming PC build. Let's fire up some games and let's have a look at what the PC performs like. On screen we are looking at the performance numbers that I gathered from today's build and I ended up running 15 games in both 1080p high settings as well as 1440p resolution as can be seen. For the most part reaching 60fps or more is what you can expect. But let's have a greater look at some of the games tested and first up we have Horizon Zero Dawn starting at 1080p where I went for the highest setting that the game offers. Here we are able to reach around 51 FPS. Moving on to 1440p where I went for the original preset and here we managed to hit an average of 47 FPS. Next up we have Death Stranding starting at 1080p max settings. This results as can be seen with an average of 66 FPS. At 1440p we saw 61 FPS on average, again using the highest setting in the game. Moving on to CSGO, once again starting with 1080p. 
Here I'm opting for competitive settings and this results in about 270-ish LPS on average. Jumping to 1440p at the same graphic settings results in about 250 LPS on average. Doom Eternal is next up and here I'm opting for the Ultra Graphics preset. Let's start with 1080p which results in about 104 LPS. At 1440p we're able to squeeze out about 74 LPS, again using the Ultra preset. Moving on to Overwatch and as for the graphic settings I'm picking a mix between high to ultra and this results in about 135 LPS at 1080p. At 1440p we are seeing an average of 104 LPS. Valorant runs smooth as well with an average of over 205 FPS and if we look at the settings we see that everything is maxed out. This is at 1080p. At 1440p we are still seeing around 174 FPS. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, perhaps one of the most anticipated games of 2020 and 2021. Let's start with 1080p where I went for medium preset here and this results in about 54 to 55 fps on the average. This is obviously with ray tracing turned off. Stepping up to 4040p we are almost able to reach the magic 60 fps mark at 50 fps and looking at the settings you guys can see that I went for uh, low with resolution scaling set to 80%. Again guys, all PC components can be found down below. Guys, 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 we now have an official Discord server up and running and if you wanna become a part of the community, ask questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, you definitely wanna go ahead and join the Discord server. Link to the server can be found down below. Now watch either of these two awesome videos on screen and I will see you guys in the next video.